What is that? Just a little something I cooked up whilst you were away, my darling. I do believe it was Maggie Thatcher who said that kissing a man without a moustache is rather like eating an egg without salt. Uh, don't point that thing at me. Told you. I have put no inconsiderable thought and effort into this endeavour. You see, the domain of a man's upper lip is his sovereign ground. You have five minutes to shake Every it off. Mordecai man before me had the same. Why can't I? Darling, mm. you really won't shave it off. Well, I can't, my dark. Jock? Yes, madam. Please, will you make up the guest bedroom for Mr Mordecai? Already have, madam. And that's a clip from Mordecai. I'm delighted to say that uh, one of its uh, many stars, the one and only Paul Bettany, joins us. It's been far too long. Hello, Paul. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Good. It's been a very, very long time since you were on this show. Has it? How long ago is it? Well, I think it was for Blood, actually. Ah, yeah. So that's, what, is that three years now? Well, or two cons- years? and considering that we've been on your side for, a, like, forever. I know. Uh, I know, you've always been on my side. I've, I, I've enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, gangster number one, we're on your side. Master and Commander, yes. we're on your side. In fact, Mark made a point of telling you, that for that and the beautiful mind, that you acted Russell off the screen. <laughs> oh, bless him. Ne- never, never shy of saying something controversial. We even quite like Wimbledon. God bless you. And You and my mum. Yeah, I'm not sure Mark found anything good to say about the Da Vinci Code, but <laughs> this, is, this is all ancient history now. And he liked Transcendence. So look, anyway, it's, it's very good to have you on the show. And, uh, and Mordecai is the new movie, another movie that you've done uh, with Johnny Depp. So just, just explain who this character is and where you fit in with this uh, interesting uh, group of performers. I'm Mordecai's um, butler, driver, thug, assassin. And um, it's, it comes from a sort of long tradition, I think, of, uh, of comedy duos that the, of the, the, the clever servant and stupid master that go back to Roman comedy and Shakespeare and, you know, all the way through to Cluzo with Cato and, and, um, and so on. And it's a, it's a really rich... Uh, uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a really rich area of comedy to work in. We had, you know, so much fun, and I, I think Jock is a firm believer in the uh, class system and his place in the universe and his job, however inept and irritatingly um, cowardly his his master might be. It's mm-hmm. it's Jock's job to be to look after him, and even if that means being shot in the face by his master. And the, uh, this is Jock Strap, your character. <laughs> yeah. Jock Strap, exactly, from yeah. Hoxton. <laughs> so, um, and your boss is Johnny Depp. So now the, these, ca- I haven't read any of the books. In fact, I was unaware of the, uh, uh, is it Cyril Bonfig- Bonfiglioli? Yes, Bonfiglioli. Yeah. yeah, and they're really, I really would recommend you read them. They're, they're a real guilty pleasure. Are they Woodhouseian? Um, is it sort of Jeeves and Worcester, that kind of thing? But, but on acid. Well, what happened was uh, I was making Transcendence with Johnny and, and there were no jokes in Transcendence. I don't no, know I remember. Um, so I needed a little bit of cheering up and he dropped these books off um, and they are, you just you just storm through them. They're so funny and naughty and irreverent. And uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're like a, a punk Jeeves and Worcester. So Fear and Loathing with P.G. Woodhouse. Exactly. That, that kind of thing. <laughs> That's and exactly I, right. When it's mm. when the movie starts, and I I interviewed Johnny Depp. I've just interviewed him the once, which was for Sleepy Hollow, right. which is uh, nineteen ninety nine, something like that. And at the time, he was obsessed with uh, the Far Show, and yeah. he just wanted to talk about uh, British comedy. And I remember thinking at the time, this was unusual. It's not what you got from Hollywood superstars uh, like. Like Johnny Depp, so then mm. he's so the very first thing that we hear in, in Mordecai is what sounds like a Paul Whitehouse impression, which then turns out to be Johnny Depp uh, playing this kind of really posh guy, and then Paul Whitehouse turns up later in the movie. I mean, how, absolutely. How, how did that come over for you? I mean, do you, do you think that's what a lot of British audiences will make of that? I, I, you know, I think it's got a. I think the, what's even stranger than a Hollywood movie star uh, being obsessed with British comedy. You know, I mean, he spent a lot of time in England, but it, it started much early, earlier. That he, it, what's really strange is a, is a, uh, you know, a, a poor kid 
who wants to be a guitar player from Kentucky getting into, you know, Ealing comedies. You know, he's obsessed. He's also obsessed with Terry Thomas and, and, and Peter Sellers. And, you know, it's, um, wow. it, it, it's really, it, it, British comedy is really fascinating. And Alec Guinness, you know, so he's, he, he loves that, um, that era of, uh, of British madcap comedy. And so I think, it, you know, his love for the far show came after um, a real um, um, love of um, British comedy. I mean, Terry Thomas is the, the, the teeth in yes. of Mordecai are a, 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 a homage to Terry Thomas. And just a word about the moustache, because yeah. it's, it's on all the posters. In fact, he's even got Gwyneth Paltrow wearing a similar uh, moustache and he, he just seem, he does seem to be particular it's like a running it's a running joke obviously through through the movie but he does seem to be particularly obsessed with how he is groomed yes i think he um he feels that he has a sort of family obligation to grow a moustache and that every mordecai before him has had a moustache and that he is now of an age where a moustache feels appropriate and um it becomes a sort of line in the sand over which he will not cross, and nor will his wife, um, that he needs to shave it and that he won't shave it. And it's, um, you know, despite the, 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 this aristocratic couple, you know, being uh, about to be thrown, you know, into the poorhouse, they're in penury, they, um, the real problem in their marriage seems to be this, mis- this moustache. Is, is, is playing jockstrap um, quite undemanding, would you say? It must be enormously enjoyable, but it... You know. Yeah, I mean, it was... Um, once you sort of set up the parameters for who he is and what he likes to do, and, and you know, you, he's, a very, he's a very simple man, and it's, um, it's, just, it's, it's just fun to go on set and play sometime without a great deal of, you know, responsibility for kind of carrying some major theme. You know, it's just a madcap romp, and yes. I, I, I haven't ever got to do that in my in my work i say work <laughs> well no but, but it's you know. interesting and looking at your work there's a degree for it for which this year will be on the one hand this and on the other hand that so this morning i was watching shelter yeah. uh, which is this movie that you've written uh, and directed uh, starring uh, your other half jennifer connelly and anthony mackie and i thought it was just wonderful um, oh thanks so I mean, you saw it yes 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 I, oh, wow. uh, I, w- I watched it this morning and i the the con I mean you, you you've lived in New York for a for a while but you were filming bits of New York City I mean I felt I was sort of like a homeless person in New York City after about fifteen minutes you were taking me to places I hadn't been before right yeah uh, well I, you know is it is um yeah I'm really proud of it it's going to come out late this year um you know we made it in twenty one days for, for for very very little money because people don't tend to want to give you money to make a film about a homeless junkie and a homeless Muslim guy, you know, <laughs> homeless Muslim Nigeria, Nigerian, and, 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 and people shy away from giving you lots of money to make that film for some reason, I don't know why. But, um, yeah, I, I, um, I wanted to make a film, I started thinking about what I'd like to make a film about, and I thought I'd rather, looking at the world around me, like to make a film that's about judgment and how in a world of increasing grey area, as far as I'm concerned, we seem to get more and more entrenched in black and white positions but I didn't know how to do that and there was this couple homeless couple who lived outside my building my neighbors so to speak and um you know I would try to talk to them every morning on the way on the school run with my my children and we, we we didn't get very far and I'm ashamed to say that they became more and more invisible and and more and more a part of the landscape in which I lived until I just didn't really see them and uh, then Hurricane Sandy happened in New York City, and I live right on the river, so there was a mandatory evacuation. And uh, in the mayhem of getting my three children and my cat and my, the dumbest dog in New York City <laughs> into a car and head to higher ground, I didn't stop once to think about them. And I, um, when we came back, I never saw them again. And I, I started to wonder what their life was and I thought perhaps this was a a good way to talk about judgment because I I didn't want to make a film that was a polemic about homelessness being bad or drug addiction being bad or because every decent 
human being knows that it is. You know, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted to tell a slightly different story. Yeah, and and as it's your movie and you've written it and you've directed it, uh, presumably there's bits of the that whole show which were new to you. So pre-production and post-production, you obviously know about, but being involved that deeply was that. that was did a, it make you want to go back and do it again or not? Yes, I, d- I, I will. Um, um, you're absolutely right. Post-production, you uh, as an actor know something about because you come into loop or dub or uh, do, you know, uh, or occasionally you're shown early cuts of the movie. Um, so you have a, a sense of the rhythm of that. Um, what I didn't know anything about was prep, um, pre-production, and that was that was ghastly because <laughs> I, I just felt lost. I thought I've made the biggest mistake of my life. I, it just seemed to be a lot of people telling me what I couldn't do and nobody telling me what I could do. And um, and then, I, you know, the night before, I had this sleepless night before we started the first day of photography and I got up in the morning and was feeling sick to my stomach with nerves and then I walked onto the set and there were things that I've kind of grown up around like canvas chairs and, and monitors and cables and cameras and makeup people and I, then I felt totally at home and it was an incredible, incredible experience and I loved, and I didn't know whether I would, but I loved uh, editorial, I loved that portion of it. And then, but, and then, with, and then with One Bound, uh, we go from there to... Uh, the, the new Avengers movie, where you yeah. play the Vision, and I know that there is because you know we were trying to get something uh, out of Donald uh, the other day, Donald Gleason about the Star Wars film. You know, well, you know, frankly, good luck with that. So all I'll say is, and then it's the Avengers, isn't it, Paul? It is the Avengers, isn't it, Paul? Yes, it is the Avengers, and 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 here's the. How does, well, tell us about the ending. <laughs> Very good, yeah. Um, whenever, I, whenever I start to talk about the Avengers, I see a red dot appear on my chest. And I think, what the <laughs> hell is right. that? No, no, but, um, uh, I can tell you, I, you know, it was, it was, it was, um, it was strange because I came from a movie where I couldn't afford two cameras, uh, making my movie where I couldn't afford two cameras, going to the biggest sets I've ever seen in my life. It, uh, with drone